Good morning, folks. We'll begin March 10th by watching a releasing filament on the departing northern limb. We've got news coming from beneath our feet to as far out as Saturn, so let's get right to it over at spaceweathernews.com. And apart from that plasma filament we saw erupting at the opening as well, there really wasn't much to see. There is not much else in terms of eruptive behavior, and we are pretty much at a zero sunspot situation. The closest thing we'll get to significant space weather might be a solar wind stream coming from the dark coronal holes currently on the disk. They are speckled all over in a way, but thin and spindly more than a powerful interplanetary magnetic field connection source. We are finally seeing a more significant drop in solar wind intensity, even if in the last few hours that jump in orange, the density of the stream, did set a touch of instability back into our shield this morning. And folks, that gets us to our first big story today. We're coming off the first significant geomagnetic storm sequence of the year, and it lasted for a while. Reverberations apparently lasting still. Uyen storm formations began immediately in the Indian Ocean, and we can now say that significant solar storm corresponds with the third strongest cyclone ever to hit Madagascar, amidst other lows spinning in the area as well. Story posted by the watchers, and before we see another one, remember in yesterday's news we tracked the pressure building beneath our feet towards Kamchatka, Russia, and actually north and south along that entire longitude. Well, Kamchatka itself unleashed a powerful volcanic eruption yesterday, another watchers article here. Luckily, not many people live near that one, and also directly south on that same longitude. A six-pointer struck as the news was posting to the internet, downgraded to 5.9, but still the second largest quake in about two whole weeks. Up next, folks, my best guess is that is Comet Enki. The periodic comet was around and overshadowed by Comet Ison a few years ago, and will be back in 2020 after this pass. And while it looks like this time the comet is coming in towards either the Sun, Mercury, or Earth, this is merely a line of sight effect. The comet just happens to be crossing in front of the Sun around the time Mercury did, and when you see the full orbital parameters, it is clear he'll pass harmlessly by, and we'll see him again in three years. Folks, this is a Mars weather sequence, and NASA says that twin dust storms formed right after each other and followed the same track, kind of like the lows that ran at Madagascar one after another during this exact same time period. Lastly, this is a close-up shot of Saturn's A-rings and the 200-mile gap that is cleared and maintained by Saturn's closest known moon, Pan. At only 8 miles across, it has a titanic job clearing that ring gap, but when Cassini peeked a little closer, it became clear that the orbital clearing wasn't the only impressive feature about Pan. Folks, that thing isn't even close to spherical, a confusing but very cool piece from Cassini there. And folks, if you missed it, QuakeWatch.net now has your live forecasting tools and some basic descriptions and explanations to get you started. We will be building your public forecast repository there, so when you know how to do it, the source will all be in one place, and the world won't be able to deny that earthquakes are predictable. Lastly, folks, hopefully you saw my wife's overruling of my decision to close conference registration same day we sold out, but tomorrow will be the last day. I imagine after we record Fly on the Wall, I will be taking registration off the site, and it will be finally closed. Folks, start getting to know QuakeWatch.net's new forecasting tools. These will be further detailed, and hopefully the observers here lead the way in global earthquake forecasting into the future. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.